Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV and today's episode is discussing evenness. There's two types of evenness. There's rhythmic evenness and there is sound evenness. So what I want to discuss today are some of the misconceptions of evenness and how you can get a really even sound. And I'm going to demonstrate from the middle movement of uh, Beethoven Appassionata Sonata. do this little left hand passage just one bar um, bar 52 okay that can be a particularly difficult passage I was actually I've never played this piece but I was working on it with a student yesterday um, he's a professor at Cornell a uh, really fun guy to work with and um, so dedicating this video to him and documenting some of the things that we did yesterday so he said you know I'm struggling with evenness in my playing sometimes it sounds choppy and we discussed, first of all, rhythmic evenness. So rhythmic evenness is obvious. This is super uneven. You know, things are just not constant. But our brain can play illusions on us. And I'm going to play a perfectly even scale here. Um, let me put a metronome on. So let's put it on... Dum, bum, 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 bum. Maybe even a little slower so you can hear this really clearly. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here so you don't, it doesn't dominate the sound. And I'm gonna play perfectly even. You know what, let me double this so you know I'm doing one per click. Dum, bum, bum, bum. But I'm gonna have inconsistent releases. And it's gonna sound uneven. What I mean by inconsistent releases is some notes will overlap too much and then some will how uneven that sounds um, rhythmically it doesn't sound too crazy but it does sound a little rhythmically off and it's not let me show you again see how sometimes it sounded like I was speeding up a little bit when I was really clean with my releases and then it sounded like I slowed down when I held notes through one of the critical things that you develop in your playing is very um, Agile fingers. Uh, one of my teachers, Sergei Babayan, always says to have active fingers. You need to, he says that all the time, and to take the keys. So, like, you actively grab the key. Um, I'm not saying you have to pull back on every single key you play, but that thought of grabbing a key really helps. And I demonstrate with this example a lot, but one of the life changing examples uh, was Murray Pariah's Mozart E flat concerto. I always wondered how he got this sound. <laughs> And even, I, I was 10 when I was first playing that, and even though my tempo was much slower, I realized that there was something missing. You know, I, I wasn't going that slow. It was the way I was releasing my fingers. One of the obvious things in music is when you speed up, you need to spend less time on each key. You're like, well, duh, that's obvious advice. But sometimes you want to disproportionately release so you don't want to just you know as soon as the next note plays release sometimes you release a little sooner so you can prepare for those quicker releases in your faster tempos when you're playing slow so you can practice this finger staccato to simulate what it's going to be like when you play fast. Because the, the problem I see most people do is they go to play fast and they go and their hands are stuck. And the reason is, is because they've been practicing holding on to the keys so much. And then all of a sudden, they're expected to do that light touch. You gotta practice that light touch in a slow tempo. So practice a lot of those clean releases. One thing, this is a checklist designed for each of you anytime you need help getting something even or smooth, okay? So the first thing I like to do, and, and you've heard a lot of these techniques before, but I'm just gonna put it into a checklist for you because 
um, it's going to help a lot. The first thing I do is sometimes you just need a physical reset. So I'm just going to play all loud and I'm going to release the tension between each finger. So I'm going to press and then release the tension. Press, release. And actually my student did this creative fingering. He crossed under to a one there rather than using a five. I'm going to do that this time. So three, two, again, this is bar 52, second movement, a passionata sonata. Three, two, one, four, three, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so. See how I'm not holding my tension between the keys? I'm not doing that like a claw. I'm just. As soon as a note is struck, my hands limp. Then I'll do the thing I just discussed, clean releases. I'll be a little lighter. Okay, I'll do some rhythms. And then I'll maybe do some four rhythms, maybe some three rhythms if I need it. Let's say it's still not working. It's like... Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can practice this. Okay, the first thing... And I'm going to demonstrate examples that he did in the lesson yesterday because he completely fixed it within the lesson. And it was pretty uneven when he first brought it to me. What we did is he went like this. And he said, why am I playing that uneven? And I said, where are you playing it uneven? He's like, well, and he had to think about it for a second. And that's very normal. A lot of times people just say, oh, it's uneven. But can you narrow down where it's uneven? Well, it was uneven here between these two. So, and so I asked him, I said, is it that you're not getting to the four fast enough? And then there's an illusion that the four to three is too fast like that. Or is the four, three simply just too fast and your cross is good? Or is it a little bit of both? So we did something to help that. So what we did is we went, we just worked on the cross first. just to get that cross really good. I, I'm playing everything out slow and then the cross goes fast. Then we did. The reason we're doing this is to get the four to the three to be an active, deliberate movement rather than just saying, oh, my hand sucks. I just, sometimes I just play those slurred together, which is a common problem for a lot of people. And even sometimes it creeps up in my playing, even though I've developed a good technique over the years, it can happen to any of us. So causing a deliberate four to three movement by suddenly stopping on that four and then going to the three really helps. Okay, and then, okay, it's fixed. Now try the next group. And whenever you're working in just little groups of four notes, always end on the next note of, or the first note of the next group. So, okay, now replay that note and, okay, that one's good, that one's good. And he was good on all those. And then this one was the one that was giving him trouble. Um, and what happened wasn't so much that this was a huge issue. Sometimes there was a little pause there, but then he would pause here and go to there. I want to iterate something to each of you is if you do all those practice methods first, you, you build by beats, you do high fingers, all those different things I just discussed, and it's still not working. You need to either look at your fingering, change your fingering, and there wasn't a good finger change that we did here that he liked. Okay, so there were, there were options that we switched to, but nothing he felt comfortable with, and that's fine. If that's not working, the second option, those, these two things almost fix everything that aren't being fixed by traditional methods. You change your fingering or you change how you organize it in your mind. So what I had him do is I had him go. Because this is a big gap, and that's where he was having a little tension. And so what I had him do is just think of them as two different pieces. So, okay, so you're starting with a huge pause. Now you're just going to shrink your pause until it's the perfect amount. So what happens is a lot of people either pause too much or they, they do that. When you start with a very measured big pause and you just slowly bring it in, you can actively feel how much gap there is until it's the perfect gap. And really there's no gap, but in your mind there's a certain gap to keep that tempo even. I hope that makes sense. So now, now no, no 
lifting. And it worked. And he got that and he was so happy. And then this is what happened. <laughs> so he had a big gap. Before, when he was doing this, there was a slurring together. He was going too fast. Now he had a gap, just the opposite problem. So we fixed it doing the exact opposite. What we did is we just went really slow. Okay, again. Okay, and, and after a while of doing, I just had him gradually smooth that out. And finally, it started to feel really good. So I hope that helps each of you. It's a quick little checklist that you can go through to help anytime you feel like your fingers are kind of noodling together, like wet noodles. Like, you know, I hear that a lot with this etude. Or this etude's the worst. I don't even like teaching this etude anymore. People just play it like that versus fingers need to be totally light. So if any of you have any questions, you can email me. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thank you for joining me today. If you don't mind subscribing to my channel up here, you can visit my website with a complete list of video lessons down here, or you can watch some more videos over here. Thank you for your support. Good luck in your practice sessions.